Hi everybody and welcome to the new video from LearnVMware.online. Today I will show you how to upgrade your whole vSphere environment from version 6.5 to recently announced version 6.7. At the beginning, let's check the current environment. As you can see, currently I am running 6.5 on the vCenter server level. Please note that in my environment I am running vCSA with Embedded Platform Service Controller, so if you are running either Windows version or you have dedicated PCS, the approach might be quite different. Now let's check the version of ESXi servers and again we have confirmed that a 6.5 is currently installed. So let's start with the upgrade procedure. If you already did some vSphere upgrade between major versions, you would already know that the vCenter server must be upgraded first. If you start with the ESXi servers, it will work as well, but until your vCenter server will be upgraded, you will lose the management of the environment, since the vCenter server cannot manage ESXi servers that are on a higher version, so be aware of that. Actual upgrade of the vCSA is quite straightforward process. Just run the standard installer from the ISO image of the vCenter server as you would do with a clean install and instead install option will select upgrade option from the main screen. At the beginning, we have to agree with the end user license agreement as usually, but the next step will be different from the standard installation. What we need to do is to provide the connection details to your current vCenter server appliance. Once we connect to the VCSA, you need to fill in all usernames and passwords. You will need both SSO and OS administrative accounts, as well the credentials to ESXi or vCenter server where the VCSA is currently running. In the next step, we need to supply credentials and location of the destination ESXi or vCenter server. This is because what will happen is that the new VCSA will be deployed and then the configuration data will be migrated. There is no such thing as an in-place upgrade when talking about VCSA. That is why we need to provide the name for the new virtual machine vCenter server appliance in this tab. The rest of the wizard is exactly the same as the new deployment. What is the deployment size? Where the VM disk files will be stored? and network configuration. Please note that you do not need to create associated A or PTR records for the temporary IP address. At the end, the old appliance will be shutted down and the new appliance will be reconfigured with the IP address of the old VCSA. And that's it for the first stage. Now you can take a break for like 10 minutes until new appliance will be deployed in provision. So let's speed the video a little bit. As you can see, now the first stage was successfully completed and it's time for the migration of the data. During the migration, you will get a pre-upgrade check results telling you what will not be migrated. In my case, it's just a note that anything that the new update manager does not support will not be migrated, which is expected behavior. In this step, you can select what will be actually migrated. Are you interested in just configuration or you want also the historical data? Based on your selection, the migration time might get much longer than in my case, but I would generally suggest to migrate everything just in case. Now it's time to either stay in customer experience improvement program or not. And finally, summary of the second part of the migration. That's it, and all you need to do is just wait until everything will be migrated. So let's speed the video a little bit again. And that's it. Hopefully, you will end up with a success screen and few post-upgrade notes. Let's check the vSphere environment. As you can see, I am using the same FQDN as before, so there is no impact on your third-party management tools, for example. Just click on the summary of the vCenter server and you should see that now we are running a new version of the vCenter server.
Once the vCenter server is successfully upgraded, we can proceed with the ESXi upgrade. In this video, I will be using Update Manager because from my perspective, it's just easier than a CLI update of each ESXi server individually. Let's switch to the Update Manager. First step will be upload of the new ISO image into the Update Manager so we can use it when defining the upgrade baseline. You can use the official VMware ISO installation file. It can be your own custom ISO image with some additional drivers, or it can be an image supplied by the hardware vendor depending on your infrastructure. In my case, I will just stick with the default ISO image from VMware. Once the ISO image is uploaded, we need to create our baseline that will be attached to my cluster that needs to be upgraded. So let's click on the host baselines. In this case, we'll be creating host upgrade baseline. So don't forget to select appropriate type here. Next, you need to select which ESXi image should be applied. In my update manager, I have only one ISO image. So let's select this one. And that's in the terms of definition of the baseline. Now it's time to attach the baseline to your hosts. You can assign the baseline individually to every host, but it's much easier to attach the baseline to either data center object or cluster, depending on your choice. In my case, I will attach the baseline to my cluster containing three ESXi hosts. Once the baseline is attached, we need to check for updates to see the status of our hosts. As you can see, None of my ESXi hosts are compatible with the baseline, meaning that they are not running desired version of ESXi. So let's fix it. Once you click Remediate option, you have an option to select which baseline should be applied. Since I have attached only this new baseline, there is not much choice here. Then what hosts should be remediated, so you can, for example, exclude few hosts from the cluster. Not in my case. I want to upgrade all my ESXi hosts. If you want, you can schedule the upgrade to some defined maintenance window. But in my case, I would like to perform the upgrade right now. In host remediate options, you have possibility to change behavior of running virtual machines on the remediated hosts, as well the timeouts for the maintenance mode of the ESXi hosts. Usually, there is no need to change anything. In the last step, don't forget to disable HA admission control, because especially in smaller environments, your remediate action could fail simply because HA won't allow you to shut down the host without breaking the admission control. Also, you can select how many ESXi hosts should be updated simultaneously, which is nice, especially in larger environments. And that's it. Now you just need to wait a bit, depending on the size of your infrastructure. What will happen now is that the update manager will perform rolling upgrade of all your ESXi hosts. The procedure is simple. Host is put into the maintenance mode, patches or upgrades are installed, and the host is rebooted and put out of the maintenance mode. This will happen to all your ESXi hosts until the whole update is finished. Let's speed the video again. And that's it. The upgrade is done. So let's check the version of ESXi server. Let's select one of the ESXi servers. And in summary, you should see that the host is running ESXi version 6.7. So as you can see, the upgrade of the vSphere infrastructure from version 6.5 to version 6.7 is pretty easy and you do not need to worry about it. I would suggest to upgrade your environment because there are many new features in vSphere 6.7 and you don't want to miss them out. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you won't miss any of my new videos. Also, you can subscribe to my newsletter as well. I will send you a summary of my new blog posts, upcoming interesting webinars and much more. And I promise that I won't spam you. Maximum one email per month. I promise.